This video is sponsored by Mantis Sleep. Has this ever happened to you? You go to bed tired after a long day of insert personal hobby here, but your significant other whom you share a bed with needs to listen to audio on the internet to fall asleep. Take me, for instance. My wife goes to sleep at a reasonable hour like the responsible human being she is. But to fall asleep, she likes to listen to true crime podcasts, and though I like to hear about the atrocities of men as much as the next fella, it's a dang hard thing to fall asleep to. The next morning, she wakes up and finds her boyfriend still not there. She gets out to check, and man door, hand hook, car door. Now I tell you, folks, when I was offered to do a spot for man to sleep, I was thrilled. I'd heard about their products and thought to myself, well, golly, that'd be fun to try. So when they sent me their Manta Sound Sleep Mask, I was over the moon. My wife was curious, so I told her to give it a try, and... Dude, these things are super quiet. For me, I mean, the Bluetooth headphones are super high quality and sound great for the person wearing it. Yeah, I mean... The Manta Sound Sleep Mask has everything you'd want for a comfortable sleeping experience. Perforated materials for airflow and ventilation. True 100% blackout with zero eye pressure. C-shaped eye cups for side sleep comfort. And, dude, what? You can just slide and adjust where the speakers go? That's super smart design. Also, my wife had the mask on all night and both of us forgot to turn it off the next day, so when she was going to sleep again and wanted to use it, I was afraid that the battery on the headphones had depleted. But when we checked, it had automatically turned itself off since nothing had been playing and was still on 90% battery. And that's not all. Mantis Sleep makes sure all their available masks are adjustable for a comfortable fit no matter what size head you have. Take it from me, a long-time big head haver. And the Mantis Sound Sleep Mask is just one of the many models you can own. They also have... Whoa, one that releases steam? That sounds nice. And hey, one that you can put in the freezer to act like a cold compress. That's great for people prone to swelling. And you're telling me you can combine those with the Mantis Sound Sleep Mask? Where can I get them? Alright, use my link in the description or use code CHARI5 at checkout to receive a 10% discount off your Mantis Sleep order. I'm completely serious when I say that this is probably one of the coolest products that I've ever done an ad for. I'm not even the one that regularly uses it, but every time I have, I've fallen asleep in like two minutes. I'm not even prone to naps, I wake up more tired than I was, but the Manta Sleep has helped me catch up on sleep after rough nights. So if getting a good night's sleep is something that interests you, again, head to the link in the description or use code CHA2R3I5 to get 10% off your first order of Manta Sleep's wonderful array of masks. They have more than just the ones I mentioned, so be sure to check them out. Thanks again to Manta Sleep for sponsoring this video. Okay, on with the show. Oh my god! Look, I get it. This is incredibly impressive given the limitations of the technology at the time, but you cannot, in full capacity of your mental faculties, tell me that this looks good. So, okay, you got me. I'm playing the director's cut version of 3D Blast on Genesis, and there are a couple of reasons for that. For one, and I can't believe I actually get to critique the gameplay practically with the original programmer's blessing to do so given the existence of this version of the game and without it coming off purely as my opinion, but the original version controls like ass. For two, this version fixes some bugs and oversights that the original had, such as the layering order of objects that you would think you'd be able to stand on because, you know, it looks like you should be able to. Three, because the director's cut adds the ability to turn into supersonic after you collect all seven chaos emeralds instead of just granting you access to the true final boss. You're gonna make me collect all of them and not even let me have fun with it? What are you, Sonic Spinball? And fourth, it was 1990 goddamn six. There was no excuse for this game to not have a save system. Now, mind you, this game isn't very long when you know what you're doing. I didn't really grow up with this game and never really touched it on Mega Collection, so I have no nostalgia for it, meaning that I didn't know what the hell I was doing when I first played this. And a save system would have been very useful. Flickies are mysterious birds. They live in another dimension and can travel anywhere through large rings. They live in another dimension? No, they don't. Flickies have been in Sonic's world since the first game. Maybe these Flickies live in another dimension. We've never seen these guys before, but that's not what the story says. Man, what a fortunate coincidence that Sonic just so happened to be visiting Flicky Island when Robotnik just so happened to turn them into Badniks. So according to this story, Sonic can only travel through the big rings with the help of the Flickies he rescues, but he's been able to go through giant rings before. What makes the big rings and the giant rings different? I mean, like, other than the size. Why do these need the flickies in order to work? 
Nah, nah, see, cause like it's a grove and the perspective is isometric. Totally different. I will say that there are two things about the director's cut that I wish were different. I wish it wasn't based on the Mega Drive version because I think the Saturn had the superior visuals and special stages. Like, I get it too. John Burton probably didn't have the source code for the Saturn version, not to mention making a patch for the Genesis version, which I think is the more accessible of the two, was probably easier. But I think that same limitation causes the other thing about the director's cut I wish was included. The ability to change between soundtracks. I think both are great, but because Jun Tsunoe composed the Mega Drive version, which didn't release in Japan, he reused a lot of the songs in future Sonic games. And I'm always slapped in the face when I hear the Genesis version of Green Grove Zone's music because all I can hear is Windy Valley from Sonic Adventure. Knuckles, goddammit, what are you doing here? Who's protecting the Master Emerald right now? Seriously, Knuckles is just here with no explanation either from the game itself or the manual. And Tails is here too, fun fact. The manual briefly mentions that they're on the island by way of saying Sonic and friends show up to Flicky Island, as well as mentioning them by name during the special stage segment of the manuals. But if you just boot this game up without having read them, Sonic arrives at Flicky Island and Tails and Knuckles are just here, I guess. And speaking of the manual, can I just take a moment to point out the European version of the box art? I never do this. Box art is practically at the very top of the list of things I don't even bother to touch on. But this is not okay. I don't know who on the team looked at the reference material, made the clay sculpture, and said, Oh yeah, that's a proper Sonic, isn't it? Digitized it as a 3D model and slapped it on for European audiences to have a look at, but nah, mate. Also, why is Sonic paying them to go to a special stage? If they have the ability to do that, why don't they just do it instead of making me collect rings and hand 50 of them over? The Saturn version kind of makes even less sense because you could argue that in the Genesis version, they're responsible for teleporting you to the special stage, but in the Saturn version, they physically take you to it. They don't even do anything other than drop you off, like some kind of extra dimensional Uber driver. And while on the subject of the special stages, I thought for the longest time that you could fall off the bridge in the Mega Drive version. Like, right? You'd think so because of how much the bridge zigzags and the fact that there's no guardrails or anything above what looks to be a river or something. Don't get me wrong, I'm glad you can't, but when I found out you couldn't, it almost trivialized the challenge for me. Okay, I sometimes call these things Jolly Ranchers of Power because of how square they used to look in the 90s, but this is just a straight up Jolly Rancher. Not even a powered up one, just like a... I don't know, a cheese it flavored one. Also, it's so weird to me that not only was this graphic not fixed or changed for the director's cut version, which you know, but that the Chaos Emeralds in the 16-bit version look incredibly different from the 32-bit version. Like, this is what they look like nowadays, and I'd get it if the Saturn version was an updated port or something, but the two versions were developed at the same time. And you want to know the worst part about Tails and Knuckles being your ticket to the special stages? If you fail one, you don't get to just try again. They won't leave their spot, and because of that, you would think you can just give them 50 more rings to retry, but nope, they just take them. Don't even do anything with them, just yoink. It's so odd that you can only break these pillars if Sonic is spinning like the Tasmanian Devil. Like, he can spin dash in this game. What makes horizontal spinning stronger than vertical spinning? For the most part, the isometric perspective is fine. It's definitely weird for a Sonic game, and frankly, I'm surprised we're doing this again after Sonic Labyrinth. I have two nickels and all that. But for the most part, it's fine. That is, until you ask me to do some platforming, which, yeah, no, not fun. What in the McDonald's play place is this sh Volcano Valley Zone can be one of the most annoying levels to play. Yes, because of the lava, that's kind of the point, but more specifically because something can hit you and the Flickies can end up on top of the lava until you go rescue them, which is easier said than done when you don't have a fire shield. Volcano Valley Zone's boss is also made more frustrating because of the isometric perspective. For starters, I wouldn't immediately think that I can even jump on those pipes, much less that I'd need to use them to fight the boss, but also, it is so easy to fall off of them considering you need to hold a diagonal direction on controllers that only have a D-pad. And for the record, yes, I do know about the easy way to beat the boss, that's how I beat it in fact, but my point is, the setup is not as easy as you might think it is. Out of nowhere, Panic Puppet Zone changes up the way you progress through levels by having you collect the flickies from tubes rather than from badniks, which is kind of strange. Like, I guess this is his lab and this is before he puts flickies in them, but there are still badniks in this level not being powered by critters. When I first played this stage, I thought those tubes were just set pieces and was super confused why flickies weren't coming out of the robots. 
Something else that the director's cut changed about the original 3D Blast is how you could get the Chaos Emerald. You see, in the director's cut, you can collect one emerald per zone, which works out very nicely as there are seven zones in the game, not counting the final fight, which is only unlocked if you collect all seven Chaos Emeralds. It's honestly a nice change. Originally, you could try to get Chaos Emeralds every act, meaning you could have all seven Chaos Emeralds by the time you reach Diamond Dust Zone Act 1, the fourth zone in the game. The problem is, in the original versions of 3D Blast, neither of the last two zones, Gene Gadget and Panic Puppet, had tails or knuckles in them, so they needed to be added in locations that are hidden a little too well. One of the locations in Gene Gadget zone is easy enough to find, if you remember the room with a bunch of rings and a 1-up in it, but the special stage locations in Panic Puppet zone are stupid. I just found out, as of writing this sin, that you can find Knuckles in Act 1, though how you're supposed to know you can do this is beyond me, but Tails in Act 2 is kind of just as bad. The only reason I was able to find him was because I played the original 3D Blast on Genesis first, then the Saturn version, and recorded the director's cut from my personal library, and in the Saturn version, you can see that the stomach of Robotnik's tower has some transparency, making it at the very least observable that you can spin dash through there. In the Mega Drive version, this sh is solid. I have no idea how you'd know you could do anything here. And again, that's kind of a problem the Director's Cut version has as well. On top of the fact that you pretty much have to get to this part of the stage without taking damage because rings are scarce in this level and it's really easy to get hit. I have never been less clear on where I'm supposed to attack something in a Sonic game than in Panic Puppet Zone's boss, because you'd think that you'd have to hit Robotnik at some point after an attack pattern, but no, you're supposed to jump where the blinking f me shoulders are during an attack. My biggest gripe with the final fight is that the only rings you can get are at the beginning of the stage, so if you aren't able to recollect rings after losing them, which isn't hard to do during this boss, you just have to do the rest of the phases without getting hit, no room for error. Oh my god, you didn't even re-render a new image of Sonic, you just reused the same render from earlier! Oh, he's literally just yellow. I mean, okay, I understand that you couldn't add new graphics, but I don't know, was there really no space on the ROM for a few new sprites? Oh, the crab from the beta version? We gotta add the beta crab. And don't get me wrong, it is cool that he has all the functionality you would expect out of a Supersonic in this game. It's just disappointing that he's no more than a recolor like almost every other Super Transformation. In the Genesis version, there's more plausible deniability when it comes to whether or not Knuckles' sprite is miscolored, but the Saturn version unmistakably has the blue on his shoes instead of the green. And what's stranger is that on the 3D model for the special stage, it's correct. How'd they mess that up? When my buddy and I played the Saturn version for the first time, we legit thought my copy was broken or that the console crapped out because there was no fanfare or sound effects during the special stage results screen. But nope, that's just how the game is, which is doubly strange not because the Mega Drive version does have a fanfare and sound effects, but because there is a fanfare on the act results screen in this version. Nice, I got the white Chaos Emerald. Blue? That, that's not, all right, sure, blue. So I guess it's because music was stored as an MP3 file on a CD, but could they really not get the music track to loop properly? It's just kind of awkward that the song ends, there's about a second or two of silence and then starts over. I caught a glimpse of an instance where I paused the game and it shows you a map of the current level, and I have to say, if there were awards for the most pointless map in a video game, Sonic 3D Blast on Sega Saturn would lose to Tobol number one, but it would be a close runner up. Okay, why the hell are there three blue Chaos Emeralds in the Saturn version? You do know there are other colors you could have used, right? And like, most of them would be wrong, but at least they'd be different. Oh, the fight just starts in the Saturn version. But you at least had a sort of prelude in the Genesis version. Wow, um, that sure could have been a thumb. Oh my.
my god, I cannot explain to you how this feels to control. Like, words can't be said about how stiff the turning is. I wish I could physically emerge from this video and make you play this just so I don't have to describe how this game is slipperier than stepping on a greased up banana peel on ice while wearing roller skates, yet stiffer than my ex-girlfriend's bi ex-husband Steve at a BDSM yard sale. BDSM, of course, standing for bananas, wrench, and some margarine. Who do you think greases the bananas and puts on the roller skates? Playing Sonic games for these videos, as you may or may not know, lead me down some rather interesting rabbit holes sometimes. More often than not, I learn about things which I had no intention of learning, but am then blessed or cursed, blurst if you will, with knowledge I did not wish to be privy to. In today's case, it pertains to the ichthys, more commonly known as the Jesus fish. Now, do I know about the Jesus fish? Yes, I do. Did I know it was in this game? Yes, I did. And despite the fact that I really had nothing to say about it, I just know there's going to be someone in the comments saying, why didn't you talk about the Jesus fish on Resort Island in Sonic R? And to that I say, oh, get ready for me to talk about it. Did you know that ichthys is actually an acronym? It stands for Jesus Christos Teo Yio Soter, meaning Jesus Christ, God's Son, Savior in Greek, but it also happens to be the coiny Greek word for, surprise, fish. Now, what does that mean? Well, Koine Greek is an evolved form of the language, and it used to be the common dialect spoken in Eastern Mediterranean and Middle Eastern regions after the conquest of Alexander the Great, but that is neither here nor there. The ichthys was bothering me because while I knew it was the Jesus fish, meant to symbolize Jesus, I didn't know why the Jesus fish. Why did the ichthys symbolize the Son of God? And it turns out its origin is highly disputed. Its use is to symbolize to others that you are a follower of the Lord, a fellow Christian, without saying so out loud. Many theorize that the symbol was born out of necessity, following persecution of those of the Christian faith. But its true nature is unknown, attributed to baptism, the Eucharist, and feeding the hungry with multitudes of bread loaves and <gasps> fish. But what do I think? It's just an acronym. It's just a meme people shared back in ye old Boomerville. Dude, if you take the first letters of the words Jesus Christ, God's Son, Savior, it spells fish, dude. Isn't that wild? Yo, that's crazy, bro. Are you down with the G-Man? And the guy draws a fish, and the other guy's like, oh. And then they start sharing drawings of fish to others on whatever their equivalent to Facebook was back then, MySpace or whatever. And that's how they knew you were subscribed to Papa G, Little J, and the Holy Ghost y'all love the most. So what's wrong with that? Well, aside from the implications that Christianity and all the circumstances that led up to it and possibly derived from it, nothing really. It was just John Burton's way of expressing his religious beliefs by incorporating them into his work. But Sega told one of the main writers for this series that this this game specifically was canon, and I sure as didn't do all that research for nothing. If I had to learn it, so did you! Prepare to challenge! So, the lore of this game is that this is a World Grand Prix that Robotnik kind of lures Sonic and Tails to because he detects a signal from the Chaos Emeralds in the hopes that they'd collect the emeralds for him to steal last minute. Sonic initially doesn't want to enter the competition, but only does so after he sees that Eggman is competing too, meaning that Sonic is not affiliated with the World Grand Prix. And that being the case, why are his name and image plastered in this area of Radical City? Also, it mentions that Knuckles is only here because Sonic's participating in the race, and that Amy's here after overhearing Robotnik's plan, and so she's racing for the Chaos Emeralds too, and... Doesn't that sound backwards? Like, Knuckles abandoned his post at Angel Island just because he somehow, don't ask me how, learned that Sonic would be racing, and Amy, for some reason, gives a shit about the Chaos Emeralds all of a sudden, and just happens to run into Sonic at this thing? Also, and I know this is just me being petty, but it says Sonic initially turns down the idea of entering the World Grand Prix because participating in races is not really his interest. Then, bitch, what was all that shit in Sonic Drift 1 and 2? Why is Amy in car? Can she not fast more than vehicle? For why? Vehicle can already not quite fast. So, this was my first time playing the original version of Sonic R on the Saturn, and because of that, I was more familiar with how the updated PC version worked, since that's the one in Gems Collection. And what I'm used to is collecting all the Chaos Emeralds, which you can only do if you finish the race in first place, and all the Sonic tokens, which allow you to race the secret characters that you can unlock by beating them all in one go. Originally, however, you would need to play the game twice because racing the unlockable character effectively skips the Chaos Emerald check, meaning that it doesn't matter if you collected the emeralds and finished the race in first. If you collected all the Sonic tokens and raced a secret character, you're not getting a damn Chaos Emerald, and oh boy did I wish I had known that when I first played the Saturn version. You see this shit? This is so fucking easy to do. For a second, I thought that maybe I'd have to use someone else's footage to show this because it didn't happen to me as Amy, but of course it happened! It's the loop and regal ruin! How could it not happen?! Discount Rainbow Road. Which, honestly, could have also been a level in this game. It starts with an R2. I want you to look at this image. This is the image you get when you beat the game after having collected all the Chaos Emeralds. Do you notice anything strange about it? 
Probably not, considering that, aside from this one being arguably pinker than it is purple, these are the correct colors of the Chaos Emeralds. But in Regal Ruin, you collect an orange one instead of a cyan one. You didn't fix Prepare to Challenge in the PC version? There's no way you didn't think it looked like Challenge! The PC version is practically superior in almost every way, except for the fact that so many publishers got their hands on this version of the game. Depending on which one did or didn't have an extended license, your copy of the game might not have even had a soundtrack, which is like 90% of the reason people even like this game. So, your reward for getting all the Chaos Emeralds is supersonic, and if you're like me, you've been collecting the Chaos Emeralds as you play, meaning that you'll unlock Radiant Emerald, the last level in the game, at the same time. And you beat the game by finishing in first on this level, after which the credits will roll and you unlock... Dr. Robotnik? That's, uh, a rather underwhelming reward. Now, mind you, I've been unlocking all the secret characters too, and Eggman isn't better than any of them, so it's just weird that he can, in theory, be the last thing you collect in this game. WB Games is... Is that an eye toy with legs? We are sorry you don't want to help. Wow, WB Games, way to guilt trip your players into considering to agree for you to monitor and record their data without further disclosure from you. Now I'm extra glad I said no. Maybe watch a YouTube video or two with commentary or read reviews instead of recording me through the internet. Where's Robin? What? Behind you! I said, where's Robin? My dear fellow! Yo, world's greatest detective, you are all of a sudden in a place that is completely unfamiliar to you. Even if, somehow, this bearded stranger knew who you and Robin were, what makes you think he would know where Robin is? Hit me a Kraken, I knew it! What the? Where did Metalbeard go? Wow. You know, if you had told me that I'd one day make a Sonic Everything Wrong With video on a game featuring a character voiced by the actual Chris Pratt, I'd have laughed in your goddamn face. And look at us now. Puzzle. This isn't gonna be like that bouncing barrel in Carnival Night Zone, is it? Oh my god! That wasn't a puzzle! All you had to do was hold up and down a couple of times! Also, you might be wondering why I'm doing all this, covering the intro sequence of the starter pack of LEGO Dimensions, and it's because you literally have to before you're able to play the Sonic the Hedgehog level pack. I guess it's not unreasonable, but why would they not assume that players would have already built the LEGO gateway before playing? This thing takes a while to put together, and while it is still the beginning of the game, it sort of interrupts the flow. I can't imagine wanting to play immediately after putting this thing together. You know what I just realized? How come some things are made of Lego, but some things aren't? Because it seems that everything that's man-made is Lego, but we're Lego. Are the non-brick things miniature scale models? Tiny trees, rocks, and bushes? But if they're our size, why not just have them made out of Lego too? You're coming with me, Scarecrow. Uh, another one to join us on our journey. And what are you missing? A sense of humor. I disagree. That was a very funny line. Seize the shiny and fly! Fly back to the castle! No, 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 you don't! Why? Why the f*** would that happen? We were next to the damn thing the whole time! You only ever really need Batman for that fight. Couldn't Gandalf or Wildstyle take the Keystone or, I don't know, put it in the Batmobile? Hey, long time no see. Another thing to slow me down? Are you kidding me? Trust me, dude. As someone who played every single Sonic game before playing this as his technically first LEGO game, this was my exact sentiment. No Why does Sonic need car? He can jump more than vehicle. If you don't mind, you'll find lots of fun weapons, and we can offer you some excellent opportunities to use them. <laughs> We'd have to be crazy to refuse that offer. Mm -hmm. That means we're in. Oh, well, I mean, you can't blame Vortex for not knowing. You are the Joker. Nah, see, cause hold it, nah, cause like we're made out of Lego in this one. I will say that one of the most difficult things for me when playing this game is how a lot of the Sonic mechanics are implemented in a game that isn't a Sonic game. You have things like the homing attack and the spin dash and breakable monitors and springs and rail grinding, all which work the way they're supposed to in a Lego game. 
And when you've played Sonic as much as I have, you kind of get used to how certain games feel, but this one was so difficult because certain things would feel authentic, but then other things sort of remind you that this isn't a proper Sonic game. There were a lot of why doesn't this work the way I expect it to moments because there were a lot of oh this feels just right actually moments. Ah yes, Sonic's classic cast of friends. Tails, Amy, Knuckles, Shadow, and Pick the Cat! There it is. Where does this life jacket come from? I don't think this was supposed to happen. Wait, huh? How come this water killed me but the water earlier didn't? What makes this part of the ocean different from that part of the ocean? creation to truly rival you. Uh, this thing's name isn't Robosonic. It's the first iteration of Mechasonic. The only Robosonics we've had are in the Shogakukan manga and the Adventure Game books. And people have also called this one Silver Sonic, but that's incorrect also because that's the name sometimes given to the little guy from 8-Bit Sonic 2, also known officially as Mechasonic. I'm just getting started. Remember this one? I do actually. And though technically its name is Mechasonic, since the last one also was, this one is known as Mechasonic Mark II. Also, your subtitles are missing an apostrophe in the word I'm. During the part where you fly the tornado and try to shoot down Eggman, the camera kept panning down to the previous area, and I have no idea why. I think it's a glitch where I'm stuck in some part of the level because I meant to go back and into another part of the level, but I wasn't showing up, so what I had to do was remove Sonic from the toy pad, put another character in by themselves, and then put Sonic back. No idea what the problem was. Why do I need to build a dash pad here? I can spin dash just as well. I clipped through the geometry, so that's cool. Also, during this part, you're supposed to hop back on the tornado to chase Eggman again, and I have no idea how you're supposed to know that. And it happened again. Great. Also, I don't know if you're supposed to completely shoot down Eggman. Because I did, and that's when I got stuck, but the giant ring showed up before I beat him, so I don't know, dude. Hey, you found me! Someone accidentally locked me up in here! Yeah. Accidentally. Okay, this was bullshit. I pull the chain, things go dark, I can't see where I am, so I assume this is a cinematic sequence, but nope, I am just slightly out of frame and get hit by the fire. I just realized this, but are those retractable spikes in lava? Maybe that's the joke, but isn't that redundant? I'd get hurt either way if I landed there. Like, I get it if maybe I jumped right above the lava and the spikes got me, but I can't imagine making a jump that low. This happened, so... Labyrinth Zone! You know, it's hard to really care about doing these special stages when there's no stakes involved. Like, I get it, they're a bridge to the next part of the level pack, but I could just not hold my controller and beat this part of the game anyway. Chaos! The hell? Why is he this big? He doesn't even have any Chaos Emeralds yet. I uh, never thought I'd be saying this, but I need your help. You've got to stop Chaos before it's too late! I'm gonna need the last Chaos Emerald for that, Eggman! Technically not true. You've beaten perfect chaos without going supersonic. You just gotta hit the brain. And afterwards, when you're tired, I can finally defeat you and take all of the chaos emeralds back. Uh, that last part about the microphone wasn't said. Froggy? Oh, I miss my froggy. God damn it, Big! You lost the fucking frog again? Take the hint, dude! The work isn't done. I won't rest until I've seen Maria's wish through to the end. Thank you for helping me fulfill that wish. <laughs> You're not so bad after all. Take this. I thought it was a Chaos Emerald, but it turned out to be a faker. You thought a gold brick was a Chaos Emerald? Do you... Do you not remember what a Chaos Emerald looks like? I ain't gonna let it get to me. I'm just gonna creep. Don't let it hit your move. Don't let it hit your move. Don't let it hit your move. Give up the emeralds or die. I don't love you. Uh, <clears throat> sorry. I don't know what came over me there. You know, when you recite the lyrics to the songs from Knuckles' levels in Adventure 2 like this, you really realize that Hunted Pete did not go hard. That man was not cooking. 
Okay, so this side quest being called Big's Big Fishing Adventure 4 made me look into the meme because I realized that I had no idea where it even came from, and I guess I just missed when the whole thing started in 2016 around the time this level pack was released, because it's been referenced not only here, but by the social media teams, and that would have made sense to me if they had come up with the joke, but apparently it's a fan game that may or may not have been an April Fool's joke, but still released trailers and a trial version and went as far as to be endorsed by the social media team, but also didn't seemed to get much attention overall and then just kind of didn't go anywhere. And yeah, I get it, it's a joke, maybe it was never meant to be an actual thing, but it's a meme that doesn't seem to be in the cultural zeitgeist as much as other fan projects, which again, I would understand if someone on the social media team had come up with, but it wasn't, and that's what's so confusing to me. How is this joke so well known that it's appearing in spin-off games when it was pretty niche even when the joke first started? I died and was somehow forced into a first person view and could only look at Big for a little bit. I love that you specifically went out of your way to tell me that frogs like water and that you saw him near the chemical plant zone, which you would assume means that Froggy must be near the Mega Mac, but nope, he's on this random tower. Why is Sonic not grabbing him? Froggy's really not that fast. I just can't stand seeing that kind of injustice in the world. One of the many things I have in common with a certain blue hedgehog. Speaking of... Next time those boys run off on an adventure, we can tell them all about how I handled things here, and then they'll have to let me come. You know, it wasn't until this line that it occurred to me that the character dialogue isn't necessarily geared towards Sonic. In fact, Amy's lines here only make sense if you're controlling a character that isn't Sonic, because she's referencing him and his friends in a sort of third person. Big did the same thing earlier too, when we completed his quest, he thanked us and called us his new buddy, even though he should know who Sonic is, but I chalked that up to, you know, Big just being big. For the most part, the dialogue around here seems neutral, where it makes sense whether you're controlling Sonic or not, so it's a little awkward when some of these characters are talking to Sonic about Sonic, as if he weren't there. Oh yeah, I forgot this happened! So I don't know why or how, but I jumped underneath the Master Emerald as Super Sonic, the tornado spawned in bumping into me, and some of my textures reverted to regular Sonics. Remember when we needed a rocket to get to the Death Egg? Mm. I hope nobody thinks to just make more chili dogs, this plan is pretty much a bust. 300 IQ, everybody. So, I'm pretty sure the game does not want you to use Sonic during the tail side quest because I didn't have any minifigs with the technology ability and each robot generator requires you to use a character with it. So I summoned Cyborg, took care of the first one, my time with him ran out, and the second generator also requires Batman, so I used him to rent Cyborg, and when I switched to him, the side quest just reset. I have no idea if my toy pad was malfunctioning or what, but I kept getting sucked into the vortex during the section. It's only appropriate that this would happen in Sandopolis Zone. Hey everyone, Char i5 here. Thank you so much for watching my CinemaSins pastiche of everything wrong with Sonic games developed by Traveler's Tales. I wanted to make this video ever since I finished playing Sonic Dimensions, and I wasn't sure how I was going to cover these games because they're all very different, so they don't really fit into any other sort of uh, theme. But I figured, you know, they're all developed by Traveler's Tales, so why not just you know make that its own compilation? I think it worked out pretty well. Uh, question of the video, what do you guys think of these games? Uh, I think it would take me a while to get into what I think of them individually, but uh, overall, I really do quite like all three of these games. Um, they each have their own weird mechanics, and, and I think that because of that, they are very charming, and they're very memorable, and they stick out in my head. I'd never put them in, like, my top favorite Sonic games or anything, but they just stand out, and I think they have a very special place in my heart because of that. Uh, but yeah, what do you guys think? I'd love to hear your thoughts. Uh, shout out to CinemaSins, the awesome people that I pastiche. They also host sister channels that cover music videos, brands, and other topics. On screen, you're seeing the name of the wonderful patrons and channel members that contribute to this channel each month and help things, you know, stay afloat. If you'd like to see your name and, and profile picture amongst these wonderful people, you can head into the link in the description to check out my Patreon or click the join button underneath this video. It's right next to the subscribe button. Any little bit helps. If not, you know, just share this video, give it a like, comment, do all that engagement stuff, share with someone you think might enjoy this video um and, but yeah i won't keep you guys much longer thank you guys so much for your continued support for watching and i will see you guys next time until then stay safe stay awesome this is chair r5 signing off she is it's kind of perfect actually <laughs>
Good job, Dar. She's a paid actor. authentic. <laughs> Sorry. It's okay. 